Hey guys. All right, so today we're going to uh, do a quick little demo here on how I build cutting boards and specifically joint wood using a uh, saw stop compact table saw. I don't have a jointer, but I do have a DeWalt lunchbox planer, the DW735, which works pretty awesome. But uh, yeah, I'll quickly go over how I, how I break down my rough lumber, how I get things lined up and how I get everything squared away to be nice and straight and uh, end up with really great tight glue lines. Make sure to watch to the end of the video. There is one key step that resolves two major issues in creating perfectly jointed faces on any table saw. The first step here is to roughly lay out our cuts. I know that I want the cutting boards to be about 14 inches wide, so I'll mark out and cut these at 17 inches. This will give me some room to play with when gluing up so the ends don't need to be perfectly aligned and will also allow me to easily trim off any snipe I get on the ends of the boards when we're planing. I'm using the miter saw here to quickly break down these pieces. The boards are decently square and flat, so nothing too crazy or scary here. After cutting them, I use the flat surface of my miter station to check to see if I have a flat face. I mark the flat side facing down for the next few steps. There are a couple ways that you can straighten an edge without a jointer. My preferred way is to use this MDF sled I built. I use it for both flattening faces on the planer and for jointing edges on the table saw. Really all you need is a flat, straight piece of MDF or plywood for this, but I like to make use of this sled for both purposes. I like to start with the cleaner and straighter of the two edges of the board. I use a bit of hot glue and line it up so that the edge just barely hangs over the side of the sled. Press down and the hot glue will hold it in place for us. At this point, it's important to quickly verify that the table saw blade is at 90 degrees. I do this with a magnetic digital angle finder, but you can also use a square. Once we hit 90 degrees, we are good to go. Here you can see the edge just barely hanging off the side of the sled. I set up the fence so the MDF sled rides perfectly between the fence and the blade. Because I know that the side riding along the fence is straight, the straight edge is transferred to the piece of cherry we're cutting. The hot glue releases and the board comes off with just a bit of scraping here. You can see here we have a perfectly flat, straight edge to work from. Now it's as easy as repeating this step for every board we need to join to face on. All right. Now that we have flat boards with a jointed edge, we'll run our pieces through our planer to get them to the rough height we want to work with. This is eight quarter cherry and walnut we're using and I want the finished boards to be just under an inch and a half thick. I'm going to plane them down to about an inch and three quarters at this point and uh, ensure that they're all around the same height. This just makes it a little bit easier when we're doing the glue up. Next up, we'll rip this to a rough working widths. This is important. We don't want to rip them down to our final width yet. I want these to end up around two inches wide so for now, I'll rip them to two and a quarter. Roughly split up the offcuts when we're done our two inch pieces and the focus there will just be trimming off the rough edges. We can lace those into the boards later. Okay, now that we have all of our pieces cut to the rough widths, let's lay out our boards. This would be the same process you go through for any type of panel glue up. For cutting boards, I focus more on which side I want on the top of the finished board than I do the grain direction of each individual piece. Given they are small boards with lots of glue, I think the risk of major warping or cupping is pretty small. It's more important to me to have the most pleasant grain pattern and to ensure that any knots or voids don't end up on the top of the board. Generally, I try to ensure that the pieces I use are free of major issues but I will fill small spots with CA glue after sanding. I don't want this on the top of the board as the CA glue could chip out when the boards are being cut on. Once we have the boards laid out in the pattern we want, we move on to the most important step, 
Starting from one side, we mark each edge that is facing in with an alternating up and down text. This will allow us to mitigate any small inconsistencies in the angle of the blade, table, or fence. I'm confident that my blade is set to 90 degrees, but I also know that with this being a job site saw, the table and fence aren't perfectly flat and it is hard to get the throat plate dead level with the table. By alternating the sides facing up during our cuts, we ensure that these discrepancies cancel each other out and we are left with a nice tight glue lines. Now the secret to this next step is to take off the least amount of material possible. I like to aim for around a sixteenth of an inch or roughly half the thickness of a blade kerf. Not only does this give us nice tight glue lines that we are looking for, but it also removes any burning from the saw. Cutting 8 quarter hardwoods, especially wood like hard maple, is going to lead to some amount of burning. This is especially true on a job set saw where you don't have the power of a 5 horsepower cabinet saw. By removing just this very small amount, you are left with a very clean edge. And there we have it. Cutting boards are easy to make, but they also teach techniques that can be applied to larger panel glue ups. I use these same techniques when building tables, work surfaces, and any other furniture that requires a tight, flat panel. I hope this shows just one thing you can do in a small shop.